Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Bite Size, uh, Bite Size PD, High Yield ML Strategies to Use Tomorrow. I am your host, Amy Gutierrez. Uh, I used this as a, a lunch and learn uh, for a, one of our schools. And so um, some of what I will be discussing today is related to something you would have for lunch. So. <laughs> Um, our, here are our professional development norms. And just as a reminder, what a, um, all that we cover today is going to be um, tied back to our MTSS framework, and we'll be looking at evidence-based instructional priorities um, that have to do with planning um, instruction, assessing, and implementing um, those to increase student engagement and learning for your multilingual learners. This is our agenda. Um, we'll be looking at um, what planning with pizza in mind entails. And so we'll be looking at it one slice at a time from beginning, middle to end. And hopefully you'll have three um, key takeaways you can take with you. Okay, our learning intention and success criteria. I am learning ML strategies I can use tomorrow so that my students can access the content and language I teach. And I know I'm successful when I can implement at least one tip or strategy into a lesson. All right, so planning with pizza in mind. And the reason that uh, I chose this metaphor was just that um, pizza is something that is familiar to you. And a lot of what I will be sharing today, hopefully, is uh, familiar to all of you as well. Um, when, uh, when I was teaching, most of my multilingual learners were either, um, they either had a Spanish-speaking background or they were from Myanmar, so they spoke either Karen or Kareni. And um, I didn't have a lot of options with um, <laughs> Uh, trans resources that could be easily translatable into their language. And I, for one, did not speak Karen or Kareni. And some of my students didn't even know how to write or read even in their language. So um, I couldn't rely on translation for a lot of my uh, resources to support them with the content. And so um, I had to look for other ways and to ways that I could um, break down that content, you know, one, one slice at a time. And so this is, this is why I chose um, pizza um, so that you can see that if, if you're, if you're chunking things for them a, a little at a time, you're able to make things comprehensible for them. They can access the content and language. Um, and, and really you can use what you already have in your toolbox. And um, it just makes it easier for your students to process. Okay, so at the beginning of a lesson, um, it's a warm up activity that you have, um, it should connect to previous content. We wanna provide independent thinking um, work time, get students speaking at times, and then also exploring their prior knowledge and provide an opportunity for success. And it's an easy entry point to the lesson and it helps them build confidence and it sets the stage for how they do with, with um, the content throughout your instruction. So I would start with some sort of a warm-up activity like this where you could eat, you could do a, a quick agree or disagree statement. And your MLs who maybe um, aren't at the level of proficiency as some of your um, English speakers, they could simply use a thumb up or a thumbs down. And um, one strategy that you could use for a warm up is what is called prediction cafe. And this could be a prediction with a text or some sort of an image. Um, and the, the steps. Um, the steps to this are you select a quote, you know, maybe some headings, 
caption from a text, um, maybe just a short paragraph, and then you can uh, write those on a card or you can either cut out strip, cut them out on strips of paper. Um, and then you would distribute those to your students and they would take a minute to work independently, review what you they were given, and then they could read and discuss them um, in rotating partners or in groups of three, um, making predictions about what the upcoming text is going to be about based on whatever you provided. And, and with this, the Prediction Cafe, they don't necessarily need to read the whole text that um, or read the text at all. And maybe it's just related to another reading that they're going to have later on. Um, really, uh, it's just to get them curious about and excited about what they're going to be reading. If, and what this would look like for your different uh, levels of language acquisition, and these levels are based on the WIDA, WIDA proficiency levels. Um, these are recommendations of how you could modify this strategy with some um, recommended sentence stems that they could use along the way. And for some of these activities, you might think that, well, my newcomers may not be able to be, they may not be able to take part in it when actually um, I have some recommendations for you that hopefully would get them um, engaged. And so, for this um, strategy, the Prediction Cafe, um, you would have your newcomers maybe just um, read a, a, a simple caption to their partners or um, just an image and they show it to, to them. And they could also be grouped um, in a group of three to where they have two um, good examples of English. And they could just be listening in, highlighting maybe some things on the, the text that they were given. Um, some of the sentence starters uh, you could they could use are like, my card says, or what does yours say? Um, and so um, with each level of proficiency, um, I provided like recommendations of how you would break the strategy down. With predictions, with with strategy like Prediction Cafe, it's really good for your MLs to um, be first before you get into anything with um, whatever lecture you have or in re text that they'll be reading or um, any um, writing as assignment or activity. It's really important for them to um, get an idea of what it's going to be about with something um, like this. And then that way they're able to even draw on the um, perspective of other students where they might be able to um, explain things um, in a little bit more simplified way where they understand each other um, and they're able to process that information. Okay, in the middle of a lesson, one strategy, um, you want to build, or, or, or one, one thing you want to keep in mind is to build background knowledge. And so you want to think about what concepts or words that your students may need to know to be able to access the content. And um, here, for example, I think of when my students didn't know the difference between, and I can't remember what we were reading or what we were working on. They didn't know the difference between um, even just the differences in home. So like um, apartment, condo, um, even like duplex, house. Um, and so, you know, having those types of words that that maybe they won't know based on their, their culture, um, you would want to clarify meaning for them ahead of time. And also, you know, we students come to us with some such funds of knowledge that um, it's important to have them show what they know. What, what do they get excited about? 
Hey, one strategy to build background knowledge is um, called list group label. Um, you would give students a list of words that they are using in the current lesson, and you would copy those words onto it, or the students would copy the words onto individual cards and one of one word per card. The students then sort those into different um, categories that they generate in groups. And it could be um, on any topic that they're lear learning, like a characteristic of um, some sort of a metal in science or uh, a part of speech um, in, in language arts. And they would do this in small groups. And each stack should have at least two cards per and two cards per stack or, or category. And then the students would create a label for each stack using a blank card. Um, and then after that, you would have them share out with the other groups, comparing the labels and the categories they chose. And you could do that in a rotation. And what this would look like. Um, based on the different levels of proficiency. So your native, um, your, your, your students who are newcomers could use some sort of a home language or native language resource. And I've linked one in there for you. Um, they could find similar terms um, to add to the other side of the card. And, and maybe they're just listening in to the discussion and sorting the cards accordingly to, to what they hear and highlighting along the way. Uh, and then um, I've also provided other re recommendations of how you would modify the list group label strategy on other levels of language acquisition. Okay. Once you've built background knowledge, um, in the middle of your lesson, you um, maybe would involve, you would go to um, explicit instruction. And so during, during, your, during this part of your lesson, you're, you'll be introducing um, academic reading, speaking and writing, and they need all of those. And so um, they, the because of the cognitive overload that they experience at times just going from one subject area to the next not having you know a, a, a solid foundation in the english language they need um, time to pause and process the information they're given so as they're getting exposed to different grade level um, content and language it's important to have um, multiple ways that they access the content along the way. And so um, definitely opening up to opportunities for them to interact um, and engage with the language and content, um, you know, with their peers um, goes a long way. One uh, wiser or wicker strategy that, um, that you could use um, is turn and tell five. And um, so during your lecture, your students would be prompted to turn and tell a, a partner what, what was being discussed in approximately five seconds. And then um, the teacher would prompt the whole class once they've had that time to share out, you know, and ask, what did your partner tell you? And is there anything you would add to what your um, partner shared or to what I shared. Um, and this gives your MLs a chance to um, process whatever you're covering in class with their neighbor. And maybe that's, maybe they're sharing their notes with one another. Um, and, you know, they may need a little bit more time to process, but giving them five seconds kind of um, makes sure that they're not going to stray and, and begin to discuss other topics um, with, you know, give them a whole lot of time to socialize and it doesn't take time from the explicit in instruction that you need to cover in your time with them. 
what this looks like for your different levels of proficiency. Um, and I'll just, again, focus on the newcomer recommendations. Um, you know, you could have, instead of just turning to a neighbor, maybe your newcomer joins a group of three and listens um, or speaks to a pair who they're comfortable with. This could be um, a group of three where one of those is, one of those students speaks the same home language as your newcomer um, so they can get clarification. But um, a lot of our, um, our native, our native speakers aren't always comfortable, um, you know, trans interpreting terms all the time. And so um, as long as they have those other two examples of, of language or the English language there and they can listen in, um, they'll, they're okay and they're still engaging. And um, they shouldn't be expected to speak right away. Um, and they may they should be encouraged to mix um, mix their home language and English as much as possible as you know um, if they're comfortable with that. And then I also provided some sentence sentence stems that you can have them use. Okay, this next strategy is um, it's called Gimme Five, and. Um, this is a reading strategy where you would have your students summarize, um, you know, on a fifth to five of what they read, and you would have them write out the summary of what they read. When they're finished, all the students would hand up and pair up with a pre-assigned partner, and then um, you would have student A share all five points of the summary, counting off, you know, one by one, and then student B would do the same after student A. Um, or if you're short on time, maybe it's just that student B shares the next day at the beginning of class. Or um, And then after this, you would have them share. You could have like a few share whole group. Again, here, um, here is what this strategy would look like based on the level of language proficiency. And um, your newcomers um, may not be able to write out a summary right away, even in their home language. So um, in that case where um, students, students may not have that level of literacy um, from their experience, um, we want to encourage, you know, using, you know, a shorter, a shorter um, text or a condensed text um, that's in English. And for this activity, they could just um, highlight, you know, two or three facts from either one of what they think it was about. Um, and the newcomer could work again in a group of three and only listen in to what their other neighbors are sharing for their summaries and highlight the text based on what they hear. And a lot of the times um, when our students come to the, us at like the secondary level, the middle school or high school level, we think that they may already have um, had covered a lot of the concepts that they're covering um, in the English curriculum or content. But in fact, you know, many main, this, this is the first time that they're, they're hearing these concepts. And um, it's the same for those of uh, those peers that are not MLs. That's the first time they're hearing these concepts. And so, um, when the question of translating, you know, a whole chapter or a whole text comes up, um, if if you're able to chunk things and have them, um, and making and scaffolding thing um, the material for them along the way there isn't a whole lot of need to, to translate. And I'll, and I'll go back to uh, what I mentioned before in my experience before, I didn't have the resources to translate materials. And so um, I had to, to do the scaffolding, to do the condensing um, of, of texts and things. And so I know that they work um, and it just takes time to see 
that they are, they really are acquiring that language and learning the content. They just don't always know how to express this, to express what they know verbally and in written form. Okay, another strategy um, that could be used is example and non-example. And this is one that supports the, their writing. Um, the teacher would um, provide a proficient response to a writing prompt and um, as well as uh, an example that is not necessarily at the proficient level. And so then would um, work with the students to point out the differences between the two and the characteristics that they would need to come up with their own um, writing prompt. And after that, um, students would work in partners or, or in groups to identify the characteristics of other examples and even um, then write some of their own. Again, um, for newcomers in this strategy, you would want to have them just following along and maybe highlighting the words. They could be looking up some terms um, in their home language online. Um, not necessarily a whole text, um, but if that option is available, then definitely use it. I know that um, Newzella and um, commonlit.org provide some, some options in other languages, um, but I know specifically like commonlit.org will provide different types of texts that relate to the same topic. And so they wouldn't necessarily be reading in a text that it's a, a different level. It would just be a whole different text, but related to the same to the same theme. Okay, at the end of your lesson or unit, some recommendations would be to just modify whatever assessment um, or say exit ticket that you're giving and um, you know, remembering that your MLs may not have acquired enough language to be able to reflect what it is that they actually know. And so definitely giving them a chance to experience some sort of su success throughout the lesson. And then in an assessment, of, if it's an end of unit assessment, allow them to um, provide those opportunities so that they can experience that, that success. And so um, you'll wanna focus on what is the absolute essential that you need for them to demonstrate the learning. Um, and so then it's not like an arduous task that they would have to complete the, the same tasks as those who are, are not MLs um, and ensure that they have ample practice with the language and structure of the assessment ahead of time. Okay, and what that looks for, you know, your newcomers and even some of your emerging level, these are your level twos, um, what does that look like for them to modify assessments? With um, the way that most assessments are structured, they're asked to, to, to write some sort of a small passage to a prompt, and so you would want to give them some sentence stems. If, they're, um, if there's a graphic organizer that they need to complete, like a Venn diagram or a cause and effect, definitely providing like some of those responses already, and then they go in and, and sort them out themselves as far as um, what category they would go under. That would be something I would provide a newcomer. Your emerging students could probably um, complete some of that with some sentence stems. Um, or sentence frames, but you'll want to offer some sort of an alternative, a choice board of, of, of options. Um, maybe they're only gonna do one section of the assessment and that's enough for them to show what they know. Um, you could also have them record a verbal response instead of do the writing. And um, you could have them point to different objects to answer questions if you did a one on one evaluation with them. And then I also provided, you know, some other recommendations for the higher level language of proficiency um, and developing and expanding as well. Okay.
So what would be the three takeaways from our time together? And I got this from a podcast I've been listening to um, by Tan Yoon. Um, at, a, at the end of every podcast, he just relates his three take takeaways to a traffic light. And so with this, I would say one thing you could stop doing is, you know, feeling like you need to translate a, a lot of, of a text. Um, if you're able to provide, you know, that information in some sort of an outline or a condensed text in the English language, um, the, your students will, they'll get it. Um, something that you'll want to keep doing is providing opportunities for students to speak in class, even though, um, say, your newcomers may not be able to articulate very much or feel comfortable speaking yet, but even them just listening to good examples of it um, is going to help them in the long run. And even like reading, choral reading together as a class, one academic phrase a day goes a long way. And one thing you could start doing is patting yourselves on the back for doing all that you do to support your, your students, especially multilingual learners, and um, even just watching this bite-sized PD to get some more ideas to aid in your uh, instruction. Okay, here is a link to my feedback form. I'm always looking to improve, so please take some time and fill that out. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, a lot of what the strategies that I covered today come from um, these two texts. Um, again, you know, they're similar to, to activities and strategies that I used during my experience teaching. And so um, hopefully uh, you'll find them useful. And if you ever want to check these books out, I highly recommend them. Kate, and then I also provided some extra resources um, that you can take a look at um, as you have time. Again, please feel free to reach out anytime if you have some questions. Um, I'm here to support you. And thanks for watching this bite-sized PD.